This videotape is an introduction to one of the most valuable machine tools, the engine lathe. The engine lathe is the father of all machine tools, often referred to as the only machine tool capable of reproducing itself. Through the years, specialized engine lathes such as the tool room lathe and the turret lathe have been developed. This videotape, however, will deal only with the basic engine lathe. This videotape is intended to show you how to perform the safety procedures that are required in every machine shop, identify the basic parts of the engine lathe and call each of them by the name commonly used in the trade, identify the functions of each of these parts, and perform the routine lubrication and cleaning operations that have to be done in order to keep your engine lathe in proper working order. When you are in the shop, you have to take some precautions that will protect you and the people around you. Always wear your safety glasses. Take off all jewelry, such as rings and watches. Roll up your sleeves above the elbow and make sure your clothes fit close enough so they won't get caught in the machine. An engine lathe is used to change the size, shape, or finish of a revolving workpiece. Here you see a turning operation changing the size of the work. This operation, called recessing, changes the shape of the work. And the finishing operation gives the workpiece a smooth surface. You are able to tell the size of an engine lathe by measuring the swing and its maximum capacity between centers. The swing is the largest diameter that can be rotated in the machine over the ways. You can see by the scale that this engine lathe has a swing of 15 inches. You can measure the maximum capacity between centers this way. As you can see, this lathe will take a piece 48 inches long between its centers. So, the size of this lathe is 15 by 48. Some manufacturers measure lathe size by the swing and the length of the lathe bed. The engine lathe is composed of five basic parts. The bed, the headstock, the tailstock, the carriage, and the quick change gearbox. The bed is the heavy foundation casting, which supports and gives alignment to the other parts of the engine lathe. The ways, machined on the surface of the bed, are precision finished to ensure proper alignment of the working parts mounted on them. It is important to check your lathe regularly to make sure it is level. A very small amount of twist on the lathe bed makes precision machining impossible. The manufacturer's setup manual will show you how to level a particular machine. But as a general rule, you should check for level across the ways at the left hand or headstock end and at the right hand or tailstock end. Now check for level lengthwise to the bed by putting the level on one of the ways. The headstock is the fixed housing at the left hand end of the ways. It contains the gears or belts that transmit the rotating power from the motor to the spindle. There are three ways to transmit the power. With transmission gears, the trade name for this headstock is the gear drive headstock. With cone pulleys and belts. This headstock is called a cone pulley and belt headstock or cone pulley headstock and with variable speed drive. This headstock is called the variable speed drive headstock. All three types of headstock have ways of changing the speed of the spindle's rotation as well as transmitting the power. In the gear drive headstock, the spindle speed is changed by engaging different size gears. 
These changes are made with the lever on the front of the headstock. The cone pulley and belt drive headstock rotates the spindle by a belt running over the pulleys. Spindle speed is changed by moving the belt to different sets of pulleys. The variable speed drive headstock uses a split pulley and belt to turn the spindle. By moving the halves of the split pulley closer together or farther apart, you can change the pulley's diameter and that changes the speed of the spindle's rotation. The controls for setting the RPM of the spindle are on the front of the headstock. With these controls, you can change settings to give you the spindle speed you want. The headstock spindle runs through the center of the headstock. It is hollow and long work pieces of small enough diameter can be inserted through the spindle to extend beyond the left hand side of the headstock. The spindle on the lathe is fitted with a spindle nose. There are three types. The tapered spindle nose, the threaded spindle nose, and the cam lock spindle nose. This is a tapered spindle nose. It has a threaded collar for precise alignment and a key drive to ensure against slipping during operations. The threaded spindle nose gives alignment and drive by screwing the attachment directly to the spindle. And the cam lock spindle nose will have three or six locks, depending on the size of the attachment. This type can be changed very quickly and provides good alignment. The inside of the headstock spindle has a machined taper to accept a sleeve and center. Here is a sleeve and a center being inserted in preparation for turning between centers. The tailstock is mounted on the ways at the end opposite the headstock. It moves along the ways and can be locked in position with a tailstock clamp. It can be used to support the right hand end of the workpiece or to hold attachments for drilling and reaming operations. The tailstock spindle has a machined internal taper to accept centers and drill chucks. The tailstock spindle can be moved in and out with a tailstock hand wheel and can be locked in place with a tailstock spindle clamp. The tailstock can be offset in its own base for taper turning by use of the offsetting screws. Cricket marks will show the offset taper in the tailstock spindle. The carriage moves along the bed lengthwise between the headstock and tailstock. With its attachments, it holds the cutting tool in place and feeds it into the work. The carriage has three main parts. The saddle, the apron, and the cross slide. The saddle is an H-shaped casting which straddles the bed and runs on the ways. The apron is located on the front of the carriage and contains the hand wheels and controls which give motion to the carriage and cross slide. The cross slide rides on top of the saddle. It moves away from or toward you by hand or under power. The cross slide is equipped with a calibrated dial to measure depth of cut. This adjustment controls the diameter of the workpiece. The compound rest sits on the cross slide and supports the tool post. It can be swiveled 360 degrees and clamped at the desired angle. It can be moved back and forth by turning the compound rest screw handle. The micrometer collar allows for precision adjustments. The tool post assembly, which sits atop the compound rest, consists of three parts. 
the post, which fits into a slot in the compound rest, the base, which is machined concave to provide a height adjustment, and the rocker arm, which rests in the base. The tool post is used to hold various cutting tools in position. The quick change gearbox is on the front of the headstock. It contains levers that set the rotation speeds of the lead screw and feed rod. When the lead screw is engaged, it provides automatic feed parallel to the ways for threading operations. When the feed rod is engaged, it provides automatic feed parallel to the ways for turning operations. Lubrication of the engine lathe is very important if you are going to keep it in proper working order. You should make a daily check of the oil level in the sight gauges and add the proper oil if needed. You should also soft oil the points located in the lubrication manual. Include the waves, the lead screw, and the feed rod. The lathe also has a number of grease fittings. Read the lubrication manual to locate all the fittings and use the recommended type of grease. The lubrication manual will also give you a schedule to follow. Keep accurate records of your lubrication. Scheduled lubrication keeps your machine in proper working order. Before leaving the machine for the day, clean it thoroughly. After you have cleaned the machine, apply a light coat of oil to all machined parts. To review briefly, there are five basic parts of the engine lathe. The bed, which supports all other parts. The headstock, which contains the headstock spindle and drive. The tailstock, which holds the tailstock spindle and supports the right hand end of the work. The carriage, which holds the tool and feeds it into the work. And the quick change gearbox, which provides automatic feed for facing, straight turning, or machining threads. These are the basic parts of one of the most important machine tools the engine lathe.